Uh, Curtis, uh, the so-called 99ers are in very large numbers coming to the end of their unemployment benefits. In a time when there seem to be very few jobs for these people, for real, does it make sense to extend their benefits or force them to do anything they can find? What's the economic play and what's the personal play? Right, and I think, that, I think you made that distinction very clear and it's important because on the one hand, there's the political and the personal side, which is people are unemployed and it's very difficult to find jobs. We all understand that. Uh, there aren't a lot of jobs out there. Businesses are not creating jobs. In fact, if you look at the statistics, we've actually lost fewer jobs during this recession than we did in the previous one in 2001 and, 2000, and 2003. The difference is, Businesses are not creating jobs at the same rate. It's a job creation problem. So I do sympathize with those who have been unemployed for, for so long. On the other hand, there's the economic issue. Unemployment benefits are almost at two years now. That is an awful long time. And the research has borne out that the longer unemployment benefits are available, the longer people remain unemployed. So there, does, there is a balancing here. And uh, I'm glad that I don't have to make that decision. I'm glad it's left to Congress, because it is very difficult to go to a person and say, you know what, you can't find a job. You haven't been able to find one for almost two years now. But we're going to take your unemployment benefits, because it's better for you. It's a, it's a hard thing to say, but like I said, the research does bear that out. Well, let's take that research so, and, and talk about what it means, really. You're saying that if we took away the benefits, a lot of these people would find jobs. Uh, well, I'm saying, I don't know if they would find jobs, but they would, they would search a lot harder. Uh, they, would, they would, instead of, you know, a lot of people, when they become unemployed, they, they remain looking for, in, for a job in the area in their living. And it makes sense. That's where they live. That's where their family, their family are. And they don't want to leave where, they, where they're currently living. However, if that unemployment check is running out, they might search harder for jobs in other areas. They might be more willing to pick up and uproot their family and move to where another opportunity Or change exists. jobs or lower their target uh, wage. Exactly, or, or, or change industries or you know, shift their focus from um, one industry that they're focusing on that they've traditionally worked in and take a job in a different one. So it, it does change the incentives of individuals. And at some point, we do need to make that switch and another thing is it's, it's very expensive to keep paying these benefits, too. So there is that. The longer we keep paying, the, the, the more we put on the national credit card, card, the more the national debt goes up. It's a tough one. It's a very tough one, particularly when you look at when people actually do find jobs um, after a recessionary period, salaries and wages have gone down. And at the same time, what we have experienced is the cost of living, the cost of energy is increasing. Um, it's still $2 on average, $2.80 uh, $2 for um, a gallon of gas. And uh, the mortgage or the rent still do. And uh, it hasn't gone down. It hasn't gone have. down. Yeah. And, you might be, and you might be having trouble selling a home with this kind of housing market if you actually had to take a job in, in another state, in another region. It's very hard to move. Um, and then you're tied with your mortgage payment and then your rent uh, someplace else. So it's very, very challenging. So what do we do? <laughs> Mark, the man with the answers. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, I, I, it's, a, it's a tough question, and, uh, and lots of different factors have fed into this. I think that we're actually, to a small degree, also seeing part of the result of achieving such high ownership rates. There's a variety of research that says that the larger your home ownership rate is, the more people are tied to a particular market. Uh, you know, it might be very- Especially at a time when they can't sell. Exactly, and particularly at a time when the job market has gone down, it's very painful to say, but the reality is they don't need more carpenters in Tampa. And, you know, what do you do to try to get that carpenter to move on? Uh, and I think that's a very difficult thing to do. Uh, there is a variety of research, uh, as was mentioned, uh, and some of this was actually done by Larry Summers uh, a number of years ago, but you know, the current estimates are somewhat between 20 and 40 percent of the increase in unemployment is an outcome of the extension of the unemployment benefits. And that tends to be where the economic profession is looking at. But you touched on a very real issue in that most people right away look for jobs that are comparable and that pay essentially what they were making. Uh, and it's certainly a very tough thing to do to say take a job that paid you half of what you were. Uh, so to some extent, you want to find a way to prod people, but you want to find a way to cushion people at the same time. And it is a very, very difficult balance to strike. And you know, especially young workers, yeah. if they feel like they've been making some progress, 
moving up the wage ladder, moving up the ladder of responsibility and title, to erase five years of your working life and go back to doing something that you were doing long before, that you think you're past. If you have to, you will, but first you take a shot at staying level. And I think a critical thing that separates this, maybe some from previous recessions is, you know, there was a sort of a feeling that, you know, okay, demand declined, people suddenly weren't buying much, and now when they buy more, we'll all go back and do the same things we were. But we spent a decade, for instance, building housing. We pro for a number of years, uh, car sales were far over what trend was. So my point being is that a lot of what drove the bubble is not coming back those particular industries anytime soon. So it's not simply a matter of, I'm gonna wait six months and my previous employer's gonna hire me. That works for some people, but by and large in the past, that's sort of been the norm. And I think we're in very different uh, scenario today. So this is just, for a lot of workers, gonna be a lost decade. Yes. Where they were either just behind, or not keeping up, or moving backwards. I think that the other part of this is that uh, a lot of what also transpired was overconsumption at all levels. And on so, borrowed money. Oh, yes. Absolutely on borrowed money, and now the bill is due. 